Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. Welcome back to my playthrough of GTA Vice City Definitive Edition. I hope that you guys are enjoying this series. If you do, um, please do drop a like because it does help the series out a lot. So on this part, we'll be finishing up Ken Rosenberg's missions and I'll be starting up Colonel Cortez's missions. And uh, sorry for a little bit of delay, but I just have to make sure that there's no curses within the first 30 seconds or YouTube oftentimes will demonetize the video. Also, hope you guys like my Tommy Versetti um, shirt on here. I have a few more outfits. Um, the blue, the blue uh, suit will be coming back, but I'm going to be wearing that when Tommy um, gets his empire. That's the part when I'd be wearing it. Avery goes without saying. Tommy, Tommy, any progress? No, 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 no. Tell me later, tell me later. Tommy, this is Avery Carrington. I believe you met at the party. Not in person. Howdy. Avery here has a proposition. Uh-oh. Haven't we got other things on our mind? I'm trying to keep the wolves from the door. So could you please cut me some slack? I'm stretched like a wire, and even if I'm dead by the end of the week, I'd like to think that I didn't die poor. Now just okay. calm down, both of you. Son, you help me, and any grease balls giving you a hard time, I'll see to it they take a long dirt nap. Okay. What could I do for you? This delivery company's got its depot on some prime land. They won't sell. They're hanging on like a big old prairie rat. So we gotta go in there and smoke that vermin out. Head on down there and stir up a hornet's nest. The security will have their hands full and then you can sneak in and put them out of business. And you could drop by Raphael's for a change of clothes. You might be there a while, but yeah, go for it. Should be a riot. If the balls drop like they should. Stop by my office sometime. Who are these pricks anyway? Lawyer pricks, rug wearing pricks, surrounded by pricks. <laughs> oh man, Tommy's dialogue there is kind of funny. Um, so we gotta get some new clothes um, from Raphael's. Um, and so Burt Reynolds, he voices um, uh, Avery character, and he was a great actor. Um, a rest in peace to Burt Reynolds. But he did a great job in um, uh, in Vice City. But a lot of people don't know this, that don't play the stories games. Um, Avery Carrington actually comes back in Liberty City Story, which a lot of people don't know that, who haven't played Liberty City Story. So he, uh, he appears in two GTA games. So Avery Carrington is like a really um, corrupt um, a real estate like investor. And um, uh, there's this company, delivery company, that has this land that he really wants to buy. That's... Um, a the land for commercial uses because it's probably in like um it's probably an area where there's a lot of traffic and just a important part of the city it's in between like yeah it's basically yeah it's like in between the first islands so like you know that would be a good commercial spot but um anyways um uh there's a strike going on at the delivery company and uh he wants tommy to go and dress up as one delivery worker start a riot there and destroy their vans put them out of business Okay, so now we fight with these workers here. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, that's gonna start a fight now. like the f I definitely like the free aim on um uh I definitely like the free aim on console now so I'm gonna play all you know I'm gonna keep playing Vice City with free aim I didn't play San Andreas with free aim unfortunately though I do regret it I wish I would have played it with free aim but um uh, I played GTA 3 mostly with free aim um and so we'll be playing Vice City with free aim as well oh who's this hola is this Mr. Versetti yeah Cortez, you were at my party? Yeah, I remember. Uh, Mr. Versetti, it was a most unfortunate incident that happened with Mr. Steele. I know. I want you to know me and my people are doing their utmost to get to the bottom of it. If you'd like to talk to me more privately, you can find me at the bottom now. Okay? Good day, Steele. So that was um Colonel Cortez. Colonel Cortez is the guy who, um, he's the guy who helped organize the deal. So he helped organize the deal um, uh, between uh, the Vance brothers and the Ferrelli family. And so he has a massive responsibility now because he helped organize the deal. Somehow the information got out about the deal and it got ambushed. So it's on him to, um, uh, to find out what happened because if he doesn't, he can have some major problems. 
one of my favorite GTA missions of all time. Mr. Versetti. Colonel. Thank you for coming. Please sit. Lobster. No, thanks. Uh, I am ashamed to admit that one of the causes of our mutual problem appears to have been the loose tongue of a man I used to trust. I've been carrying Gonzalez for years, but now his incompetence reaches new heights. It's only right that you kill Gonzalez. Did he do it? It's the money that's important to me. For this kindness, I'll reward you. And then, we will find your money together. He will be at his penthouse, half drunk probably. Use this. Use this. Go and kill Gonzalez. Um, okay, and I think that there is a... Um, uh, yeah, here it is. There's a pistol here, right near Colonel Cortez's yacht. So whenever you need to, um, uh, whenever you need a gun, you know it's not the best gun in the game, but you want a free gun right there at the beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. It's right near Colonel Cortez's yacht. So, anyways, um, uh, Gonzalez is the guy who he's a guy who works for Cortez. He's kind of his second, and um, uh, basically, uh, Gonzalez plays a much bigger role in Vice City stories, in which Vic Vance actually saves his life, and Gonzalez goes behind the Colonel's back to actually sell cocaine without his approval. And um, uh, he would have to give the colonel a cut, but he doesn't. And so the colonel is seems to be aware of that, and he's let it go for years. But now with this deal, Gonzalez is the one who leaked the information to a third party, and you're gonna find out who that third party is later on. But Gonzalez gave that info to somebody, and that's uh, that somebody ambushed the deal. And so this mission is very personal, um, this one, because Tommy's getting revenge on the guy who helped screw his deal over. Gonzalez gave the information, but on top of that, if you played Vice City Stories, this mission is so much more important because this, this is avenging Vic Vance. Because Vic Vance saved Gonzalez's life, and Gonzalez screwed him over like this. Remember, remember what Vic Vance said to Gonzalez. He said to him, "I don't care who you screw over, Gonzalez, as long as it's not me." What did the boss say? I'm gonna shut that big mouth of yours. Uh, he's got a blade. Stop running, you fat slime ball! Keep away from me, you cheap bastard! Okay, let's get Gonzalez. Now, I was scared oh, that. Sweet Jesus! I've wasted my life and my looks! Stand still and I'll make it quick! I was scared that in the Vice City Definitive Edition that they were gonna actually cut this out like a chainsaw. I'll pay you um, double, Tommy! Double! But you're squealing. No one cares, Batso. Yeah, Gonzalez definitely deserved that more. Okay, now we have to get out of here. The thing is, you don't even need to go to the, um... Before uh, I get old. You don't even need to go to the pay and spray. There's actually a really easy way to end this mission. Go right here. A bribe right next to Gonzalez's, um, uh right next to Gonzalez's penthouse, and then you can either lose the other star, or you can go in the alley here. There's another bribe really close by here. Which alley is it in? Okay, it's in the next alley. I keep always mixing these alleys up. Right here. There you go, see? Colonel Cortez says, I'll, for this kindness, I'll reward you, and then we will find your money together. And, um, uh... <laughs> And, um, uh, $250 for that. Jewelry store here that you can hold up. You can do this in the original, um, uh, Vice City 2. Okay, we're gonna take all the money. The more money we get early on, the more this is gonna help us out later on. Okay, that's everything there. Whoa, 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 okay. Okay, yeah, let's just... Uh, yeah, let's get out of here right now. Um, yeah, the cops have just... I didn't want to get in my car because I was scared the cops were just going to pull me out and I was just going to um, fail like that. Win the game of football. Okay, right here. Okay, I still got more money back than I paid for the pay-in spray, so that was worth it. Don't 
Tommy, come and join me. I'm probably gonna get a copyright claim for some of these cutscenes. Delicious, huh? Tapia snout. No, oh, no, no, no thanks. Tommy, you are like a pompous breeze that has freed me from the stench of corruption. Although I must appear to mourn his passing and carry on with business as usual. This isn't getting me any closer to my money. Tommy, my friend, you are not in liberty now. Here, we do things differently. I will continue with my inquiries, but in the meantime, I have a valuable deal to close. A favor for a friend, Cortez? You're a good friend, Tommy. I knew you would not let me down. I need you to meet a courier who has obtained some valuable technology for me. So, um, basically what's going on is that, um, Colonel Cortez wants missile guidance chips. Um, and he's trying to steal it from the French government. Um, and, uh, so he wants Tommy to go meet this courier. And you're probably wondering, what does a drug lord want with missile guidance chips? But the thing is, though, is Colonel Cortez isn't just a drug lord. That's what people, people think he's just a drug lord. Do you know what he, what he is? He's more than just a drug lord. He's a dictator. That's right. What country is he the dictator of? Un it's unknown. Um, but he's the dictator of, of some kind of fictional Central American country. And um, if you want to know what he's a parody of, I'm just going to lose this wanted level here because I don't want to deal with these cops. Oh, we already lost it. Um, so look, uh, Colonel Cortez is based on this guy called um, uh, Manuel Noriega. Manuel Noriega was the dictator of Panama. Um, he was the dictator of Panama in the... Um, when did he take power? He took power right around this time in the mid-80s. And then he eventually was ousted from power after a few years. Um, the U.S. had actually um, uh, thrown him out, out. There was an invasion of Panama. Okay, that should be enough. And we'll get the body armor too. So what Manuel Noriega did was, he was a drug lord and a dictator. Uh, basically what he did was, uh, Manuel Noriega was in contact with a lot of the South American cartels. And so he basically told them, you can send your cocaine and use Panama as, you know, a stop as you export it to um, North America, but you have to pay me a fee. And so the drug lords would pay him a fee, and then they would be, be able to safely store their cocaine in Panama. Uh, and um, what happened was the U.S. government tolerated it for some time because Manuel Noriega was an anti-communist. And this shows you that during the Cold War, the U.S. government supported a lot of really nasty dictators because they were anti-communist. Just because somebody's an anti-communist doesn't necessarily mean they're a good person. But um, uh, eventually, uh, they got rid of him. They did an invasion when they got angry that he was um, uh, sending a ton of cocaine into the U.S. The rain, she is very wet this time of the year. What? Ah, come on. Look, Cortez sent me. Just give me the damn chips. Oh, d'accord. Freeze imperialist American pig that is propriété of a gouvernement français. Hand it over. You American idiot! They followed you here! So these guys are the G.I.G.N. Um, uh, these are French Special Forces, and this is one of the few times in a GTA game when you encounter, like, another country's, like, military and police force. Um, but these, these French, these are French Special Forces. Um, and you know what I find so hypocritical about that is that the G.I.G.N. just say, freeze, a imperialist American pig, but at the same time is, what about the French Empire? You know, how many, the French Empire had so many colonies, and yet they're calling you an imperialist? You know, massive hypocrisy there. Okay. Let's get this here. Oh no, I don't want to get this bike. <sighs> Wrong one. Okay, now we just take this back to the Colonel's yacht. Ah! If you want to use the bike, it's fine. Just be careful on this bridge right here, because they can knock you off the bridge and you'll go flying in the water, and that would not be good. Tommy, um, does not know how to swim. <laughs> okay. Let's get on over back to the Colonel's yacht now. But, uh, yeah, just go on Google and type in, um, Manuel Noriega. That is who, um, Colonel Cortez is a parody of. Um, and when Colonel Cortez, he survived, like, ten or something coups. He was involved in them. And that's basically a reference to all the, um, coups that were going on in Central and South America in the 70s and the 80s. And also, if you guys are wondering, is Manuel Noriega the same guy from Black Ops 2? Yes, he is. He was a real person, but he was put in Black Ops 2. He was, uh, the U.S. did really invade Panama, like in Black Ops 2. Tomas, I appreciate your coming. Forgive me for getting straight to business. 
Diaz has asked me to oversee a minor business transaction. Let's hope it goes better than last time. Which is why I thought of you, my friend. I've dropped some protection at the multi-story car park. Pick it up, then go and watch over Diaz's men at the drop-off. Gracias, amigo. Diaz, huh? Apparently that angry midget runs this madhouse. Let's see what that creep has to do with things. <laughs> the Colonel has arranged some firepower for you um, uh, at the multi-story car park. Okay. Uh, we're going to stop by and we're going to pick up an armor really quickly also. And um, if you guys are wondering why I have $7,000 now, it's because I held up a few stores, which um, that's the easiest way to really get money quickly. Um, you could do the taxi missions if you don't want to stress a cop's chasing you, but uh, if you want to get some money really quickly... Um, uh, do the, um, uh, rob the stores. But anyways, um, uh, we're gonna use that seven grand, um, to buy an apartment in a little bit, which I'm gonna show you guys why it's really valuable. And make sure you get that seven thousand dollars before you do this mission, before you do Guardian Angel. I'll explain why in a moment here. So here you got the Kruger, but, um, I'll show you guys where you can pick up a Kruger also, uh, Hogging all the action, I see. Look, you want to do something other than just shadowing me everywhere? Why don't you come along and show me if you're any use? I might just do that. The name's Lance, by the way. Tommy Versetti. Let's go. You know, I really hope that they remake, like, um, Vice City stories and Liberty City stories, because those also deserve, um, uh, releases. Like, you know, s some of the cutscenes are, like, you know, the animations and the characters are weird. San Andreas is buggy, but, like, Vice City and GTA 3, I haven't really had that many issues with. Um, uh, and Vice City looks pretty good in the Definitive Edition, so I'd, I'd love to see, like, you know, um, you know, I'd like to see Tony Cipriani and Vic Vance again. Um, I hope those games get some love, too, because a lot of people forget about those games in, in the GTA community. You forget about Liberty City Stories and Vice City Stories. They're also really great games. You must be called Tessa's new gun. Until more gainful opportunities arise. They'll be here any minute. We both better get a good vantage point. Okay, I'll take the balcony. You get the roof across the yard. So, um, we just gotta watch over Diaz's deal. This is gonna be a lot easier because on the console you can now aim in third person with the, um, assault rifle. So Diaz is making a deal with the, um, uh, the Cuban gang. And Lance is over there. We are in big time, man. So here come the um uh here come the uh the Haitians um Haitian gangsters and um you can uh you can aim this in third person or first I'm doing it in first um but the crew I've always liked the Kruger over the um, M4 in Vice City and I like the Kruger the most because the Kruger does not have that much recoil on it if you notice it's actually pretty easy to aim in first person mode. Blow that car up. Got him. Now this dialogue has changed a little bit. So Diaz actually says something different um, uh, in the original on this mission, and um, we'll switch this out for the Uzi. But um, you guys know what I'm talking about. This this is the censored version of of, um, of Vice City. But Shut there was a whole controversy when Vice City came out because some of the characters said some, you know, things about other characters that people saw as offensive. And I can under I can understand why they took those out to avoid controversy. But at the same time, is you know those comments weren't in the game to you know, cause controversy. Those were basically to show that these characters were ignorant. Like, Diaz is just a scumbag. So that was the, um, uh, the point. So, like, the characters that say, like, you know, ignorant things, uh, those characters were meant to be ignorant in the first place, and you were meant to not like them. That was the point of them. 
but uh, Diaz's dialogue is a little bit um, uh, different in this one. Not by much, but by a few words. Um, but you can look up like the uncensored version on YouTube and you'll see um, uh, what I'm talking about. I just hope nothing else is like you know censored in this in this version, like the violence or like anything like that or the cursing. Um. I live. Take heads, and it's all down to you. What is your name? Tommy. I see you soon, amigo. I think. Yeah, Diaz is really annoying, but here's why I told you guys to buy Shh, the apartment. Guy. Let's see if um. Uh... Oh, it is here. It is. Oh my god, it is in the Divinity Division. So, D, uh, when you do the uh, regular, you know, Vice City, Diaz's Admiral will be right here, and Diaz's Admiral is actually bulletproof. And, you know, people say that it's a glitch, but I'd like to think it's not a glitch, considering that Diaz is, like, the most powerful drug lord in the, um, city. I'd like to think that he does have a bulletproof Admiral. Um, oh, we got a phone call. Tommy, it's Ricardo Diaz. I want to thank you for looking out for me, my man. I asked that prick on set, he said you're the real deal, my friend. Will you not come see me? I need a guy like you. All I have now is dickheads. Dickheads everywhere, yo. I make you real rich. Okay, let me see if this, um, uh... Let me see if this Admiral is, in is indestructible. That is two magazines from a Kruger, and the Kruger is based on the Mini-14, I believe. Um, not a lot of video games actually have the Mini-14 in it. Um, wow. So, it is indestructible. Yeah, so you want to save this car, Diaz's car. This car, this car will help you out a lot. Like, certain missions where you need to go to areas where you can get blown up really fast, yeah, you definitely want to save this car. Um, okay, so now, let's go buy that apartment, um, or that condo, I should say, and we'll store this, um, uh, store this vehicle there. Okay, where is that condo? It should... Okay, it's right here. I just passed it. Park right here, because this is the garage that you can use. And we purchase it, Ocean Heights Apartment. So now you want to store the Admiral here. Uh, this is the earliest, really, garage that you can get. Put this in here. And we leave it here. There we go. And I'll show you guys two more things really quickly before I leave off this part here. So right here, this location. Let me show you guys in the map. It's kind of like this square building here on the southern part of the right island. So you go in here, and this should be in the, the Easter egg hopefully exists in the, okay. The Easter egg exists even in the, um, uh, in the remaster, or the, uh, yeah. So you see in the bathroom, there's actually a chainsaw, and you notice the bathroom was actually bloody. This is a reference to Scarface, um, uh, because Scarface took place in Miami, and here you see briefcase right here with cocaine in it. This is, this is the, um, based on the hotel where, uh, the, um, the chainsaw killing happened in Scarface. So Tony goes in here in the movie for a drug deal that goes bad. Um, he gets betrayed. They take him in the bathroom. They kill his friend with the chainsaw. Eventually, Tony gets loose and gets revenge on the guy. And if you notice that the, the guy that, um, Gonzalez, um, uh, Tommy kills him with a chainsaw. That's a reference to Scarface. And on top of that, Gonzalez, if you look at what, what shirt is Gonzalez wearing, he's wearing an orange, you know, um, kind of tropical shirt. You know, in the movie, Hector wore kind of an orange-yellowish shirt. It wasn't tropical, but it was around the same color. So that's a big reference to that. So now, um, uh, let me show you guys the, um, uh, the Kruger location, because there's actually, there's a free assault rifle that you can get on the first island that will help a lot of people out, too. But this mansion, you can actually purchase this mansion later on, um, but what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna jump on this, uh, I know it's a little bit hard. Okay, jump on that. And then from here, jump to this rooftop. And here, see? And you get a Kruger. So that, that helps people out a lot. So Vice City does look really good in Definitive Edition. Um, uh, so thank you guys for um, uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this part. On the next part, I think we'll do Diaz's missions. 
So thank you guys for watching. See you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone.